account of those things and cause us to lift our heads up and uh, look towards the hills from whence cometh our help um, that we can praise you by your precious name. Thank you, Lord, for doing this. Blessing our meeting, blessing everything that will be said and done as was already prayed. We thank you for touching our hearts and lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 We can be seated for a moment. Welcome. Is there anybody here for the very first time? Yes, anybody else? Wow, we see some hands. Let's give them a God bless you. Thank you very much for coming here. Amen. We have here our brother Cephas Ford. Can you stand for a moment? Brother Cephas Ford is one of our traveling deacons from the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but he would call it Sweet St. Vincent. Amen. So we welcome you, brother. Thank you for coming here. People from across the miles and over the highways, and you've traveled, and you've come making this small sacrifice to just gather in the house of the Lord. And this is what we appreciate so much, that you're able to make it. God is good, and he has brought us safe thus far. We want to praise him. We want to the, the, we want the Lord to bring us through an, an adjustment in our attitude Amen. where we can just worship and praise Him and regardless of what, we could just live and glorify His name. Welcome to Camp 2017 here in North Carolina, situated in the Uwari Desert or the Uwari Forest. <laughs> For a moment, it, I thought I was in a desert. <clears throat> but we appreciate so much of over 51 acres of forested area that we can gather in this facility nestled among the forests. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, amen. 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 And someone told me, the closer, the nearer you are surrounded by nature, the closer you feel to God. And that's how it is. During this week, we want to encourage you to Believe God for great things. Amen. Amen. Expect great things from God. You know the famous oh, yeah. William Carey who pioneered the, 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 um, in the land of India many years ago. William Carey had a, a famous statement that he says, expect great things from God. Attempt great things from God. Amen. Well, I can understand the expectation because every one of us, I hope you'll come here with that anticipation and expectation because God will not disappoint you. Amen. Amen? Amen? And so when he said, attempt great things from God, for years that had bothered me. And I wondered, well, can I attempt great things for God? And then more and more, as I grow in the Lord, I began to realize that attempting great things for God is putting my faith on the line Amen. and Amen. believing God. And so we want each one of you to believe God. If you are sick and afflicted, believe God for Amen. healing. Amen. For those of you Amen. who might be in your homes and could be listening here too, on your behalf, we are believing God for tremendous healing yeah. on your behalf. Amen. For those of us here, I, I often refer to the seen and the unseen. For both, for both congregations out there, we say to you, let's believe God. God is still the miracle working God. Amen. And so some of us expect miracles, isn't that so? Amen. But I'm Amen. thankful to God that miracles does not come in a briefcase of somebody coming from a foreign country. Miracles come from the Holy Spirit that touches our hearts and gives us that wonderful definition of miracles. Amen. God Amen. is able. Amen. I can't hear you at the back there. Amen. 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 God is able. Amen. He can do it again. If God has worked one miracle, He can do it again. We are here for healings. We are here for miracles. We are here for deliverance. Deli deliverance that we can be set free and move into the realm of divine spiritual uh, heights with the Lord. Amen. We are here not only on behalf of ourselves. We are here on behalf of those who would are bound and need that deliverance. That's why we are here. I'm not going to ask you why are you here at Camp 2017 
in the, the in North Carolina. I'm going to tell you why you should be here. And those are the specific reasons for healings, for miracles, for deliverances, for victories in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are not here to waste time. And God is not in our midst to waste time either. Amen? Amen. So we have to believe God. Hallelujah. I encourage you. You might be trusting God for a long time. Keep holding on to the horns of the altar Amen. and never let loose. Amen. God will answer the prayer. Amen. Don't give up. Glory. Don't give up at the brink of that miracle. Amen? Amen? We are here to pray for each other. And those of us, you know, we have our private rooms and so on. Spend that time. Bow the knee, bow the head, and bend the knees, as someone told us, uh, you know, and let's pray and seek the Lord. Pray for each other. Let's enjoy the fellowship one with another, whether it be in the meeting place, whether it be in the upper room or the supper room, regardless of wherever. Let's enjoy the fellowship. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what God wants us to see. That's why we're here. So these are some of the objectives I'd like to encourage you on. And I'd like to encourage you to let the Lord just intervene and let him just bless your heart as you bless each other in your social interaction with each other. Just continue to let that Holy Spirit just flow among you. You will be blessed. This, this evening, let's continue to believe the Lord for that healing, miracle, deliverance and victories that I have mentioned before. Amen. Amen. And let's continue to believe God. And if there is a prayer time, or if there is a praise time, or however the Spirit of God moves in these meetings, be prepared for that. Amen? Amen. Be prepared for the story Amen. of the waters at the pool Bethesda. Amen. Because the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. There is a rich anointing here. Amen. Can you not feel that anointing here? Amen. Can you not sense the power of the Amen. Holy Ghost is here? To set men free. And to set us gloriously free that we can walk out after this camp is over that we may say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 We are here not only on behalf of our friends and families, our loved ones, we are here standing in the gap. Amen. We are standing in the gap on behalf of a nation that in this country. We are standing in the gap on behalf of those who are in need and suffering and needs the touch from the Master's hand. So that's why we're here. I would strongly advise that we keep politics out of our deliberations, out of our conversations. Yeah. Politics belongs out there. The kingdom of God. We already voted for Jesus Christ is the king. Amen. 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 And so if you're going to criticize somebody, I'll say to us, I'll advise myself and all of us, instead of criticizing somebody, pull back my criticism and then pray for them. Amen. That's better Amen. off. Amen. Instead of Amen. entering into any conflicts, the love of Christ is supposed to overwhelm us and flow through us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So let's trust the Lord about that. And let's just, uh, can we turn over to the book of Micah chapter 4? If you have our Bibles, I'm just going to read about two or three verses. Good to see everybody bringing their Bibles here. Hallelujah. Micah. Chapter 4, but he has it, but in the last days shall come to pass mm -hmm. that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow unto it. Yes. Hallelujah. Many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the, to the mountain of the Lord Amen. and to the house of God of Jacob. And, we will, and he will teach us of the law. And we shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you accept that this evening? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Turn over to the, uh, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12 and I'm going to read verse 22 
and 23. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge, to all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Amen. Amen. That's the objective of our, of our meeting here. That's why we gather and that's why we're here. And uh, I wonder if we can just look to the Lord as we all stand, as we enter into that song. Come bless the Lord, all these servants of the Lord who stand by now. Can we all stand? They, these are beautiful words because remember in the Holy of Holies, it was the Shekinah glory that gave the light. And in the holy place, they had the, the golden candlestick that gave the light. And outside of that was just the open. They could only enjoy the sunlight when it's day. But we can sing, come bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands. Don't be afraid to lift up your hands. Listen, we want you to be relaxed. This is a stress-free environment. Amen. This is an environment, I don't mean necessarily here, but I mean in the presence of God is stress-free. Stress-free. Stress-free because whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. Amen. So if you felt inclined by the Holy Spirit to raise your hands and to praise God, you just be yourself. Forget about the person that is next to you, how they look and all kinds of things. Just focus on the Lord tonight. Amen? Amen. He's able Amen. to set us free. Come bless the Lord. Somebody can sing. Cross. 
with his arms wide open, signifying that he's saying to every one of us, come in, come home, come, he's calling us. And those of us, if we are slipping back and we're slipping behind, the Lord wants us to make that rededication of our lives back to God. Amen. And we need to really Amen. see the open arms of the Lord and saying unto us, come, come. And we just sang that song, Come Bless the Lord, All His Servants of the Lord. There's another one, there's another song that says, Come. Come bless the Lord, all his servants of the Lord. There's another one that says, Come and let us, the, the, the very verse that you read, Come and let us go where? To the mountain of the Lord. This week we are going up to the mountain. Amen? Amen. You're up in the mountains. And when you're at the mountain height, you can see a total panoramic view, a bird's eye view of what's happening below. That you can say, that one I pray for you. And that one I claim divine healing. And that one I claim. That's it what God wants to give us. That victory in, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. It's good to be excited for the Lord. Amen. And just in case... <laughs> You are not, or just in case you're excited, your friend is not, just glorify him. It's great to be a child of God. Amen? Amen. It's great to be a child. If you're disappointed with the Lord, get back to the altar. Come back to the altar, between the, the porch and the altar. Cry out to God, and he will answer you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing this one. Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let's close our eyes. Believe the Lord. As we're going up to the mountain of the Lord, we're doing like what Abraham did. We're taking the offering back to the Lord. And we're going to claim the victory. We're going to claim the victory for our household, for our neighbors, for our friends, for those who are suffering. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
wonderful anointing here. Yes. And we do not want to miss this opportunity. With our eyes closed and as we focus on the Lord, this is a realm that we could expect anything from God. Yes. This is a realm where we enter into that divine realm, beyond human realm. And in that divine realm, God does some things beyond our expectations. Yes. Hallelujah. And it seems like if the Lord would want to touch and to do some miraculous things, some miraculous healings, we can sense it by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to ask you just to keep focus on the Lord. Just close your eyes. Just focus on the Lord. He's going to do great and mighty things. There's a wonderful rich anointing here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're not only here on behalf of ourselves. We are here to pray for each other. That's what I, I said earlier. We're here to pray for people. We're here to set people free. In the name of Jesus. We are here that this captive may set free. We are here with the faith of greater than the centurion who said, Speak, Lord, your servant will be healed. Say the word, say the word. And outside of this building, any requests that you have, come right now and God will just, we will pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Just, just wanted to say this word. Uh, the, the, uh, the little boy that we sent the prayer request in, our, our son Brian and his wife Jessica, yesterday and was posted and he has this ulcerative uh, ulcerative colitis. He is in grave condition tonight. He's 12 years old, and uh, it it in the natural it doesn't it doesn't look good. But I just I just felt on my heart tonight uh, uh, to to ask if if Megan Levson and Steve would come up. They have been through this and. And God has answered the prayers of the body of Christ. And Amen. I just would like for them to come and we'll stand with them and you just come. And Heavenly Father, we come to you, and Lord, we know that you, that you are a God who hears and who answers. And Father, we just bring Graham to you this evening. Yes. And Father, as a whole body, the body of Christ, we lift him up to you. Yes. Father, we just pray that you would touch his bowels. Touch his body, Father, set him free from this disease. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus that these things that plague him would plague him no more. Father, we know that you are able. You are more than able. Father, we feel your spirit here this evening. Lord, we just in faith, believing, bring him to the cross of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as you said on that cross, it is finished. We know that thy work is finished for Grand today, and that you have set me free. Lord, we pray for his family. I don't know if they know you or not. Father, we pray that they would feel your presence like never before. Yes, Lord. May there be no fear in their hearts because your perfect love casts out fear. May they not listen to the diagnosis, but may they fix their eyes on you yes. because you can change the outcome regardless of the diagnosis. Father, we pray for the medical team that they would have great wisdom and that somehow you would be glorified in this yes. young life. Yes. Yes. Lord, extend his life many, many years and many decades Hallelujah. that he would be able to stand 
and give glory and honor to you as you have saved and spared his life. But Father, my heart goes out to the family at this time, and we ask and pray that you would be with them in a very special way. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. While we yet linger in the presence of God, is there anyone else faced with a situation that um, we know that we're going to partake of the communion today, of that bread and wine where healing, the healing touch of the Lord will be given to as well. But for those who is those person or persons who might be in a desperate situation similar to this young child here that may not be here while the presence of the Lord is so rich here there's a wonderful anointing if there's someone else that would like prayer on behalf of someone else just don't be hesitant just come forward here and we will pray thank you Reggie praise God I wonder if two of the other brethren can uh, many of you who follow Facebook have known February 15th, or 16th my mom had a massive stroke and uh, she hasn't been home since and in the last three weeks uh, she's really declined and us kids were doing the best we can to support our parents our whole family just needs a major touch from God. Yeah. And especially mom, because she's got to a point to where she just sits there and says, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. And we're sitting there right there next to her saying, mom, how can we help you? And she just says, help me, help me, help me. She's trapped in this body that just doesn't work anymore. Uh, as Andy uh, knows, he was up there and saw her, you know, uh, she can recognize people and for a short minute or two, she has her own little lucid moments, but then she's out there. So, uh, and my dad, you know, and a lot of you know my dad, he's a wonderful man. And um, the other day he just started breaking down crying because mom was at the nursing home and just crying and said, I want to go home, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. And my dad's not capable of taking her home to take care of her because, uh, as many of you know, he had a major heart attack, and basically the doctor said he had a V8 engine and he lost six of the cylinders. So my dad's been plugging along for the last 10 years, just on two cylinders, and it's starting to wear on him. And uh, he just needs, we need as a family a touch from God. Amen. So if we could pray, that'd be great. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you uh, Ken and Joe and Hector and Paul yeah. Colorado. Paul, Paul yeah. We lift up both of them to you, yeah. dear Lord. Oh. Joanne in the nursing home and uh, her situation is very dire at this time, my father. And quite frankly, Lord, we don't even know what to pray sometimes. But my father, we would pray that you would place your hands upon her brain, upon yeah. her blood vessels, yeah. upon her body, upon her paralysis upon her quality of life, my yes. father, and set her free, my father. Yes. Uh, give her life and health and healing. Uh, we commit her to you, my father, to uh, restore her, my father. Yes. We remember Ken Kector, a great friend of the church, a great elder in the church. We pray your hands to be upon him as he has struggled with his heart and with passing out and falling and the host of issues that he has had at this troubling time as well. Bless him and strengthen him, we pray, my Father. Strengthen him from, from within, my Father, and yeah. from without. Yeah. And for Reggie Kector, mm -hmm. and for all of the Kector family that has jumped, uh, stepped into the plate, and they're taking care of mom and dad, and helping, and loving, and caring. I pray for every one of them that you would strengthen yes, them as they Lord. do Amen. the things that family does yeah, for one God. another when they praise love one God. another. That he would strengthen them and give them the strength yes. that they need to carry through these very uh, difficult times as this. And Father, um, we just commit this family to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a close personal friend back home. Um, 
we've been friends since before my first transplant and um, her husband has been chronically ill pretty much from the beginning of their marriage and it's just gotten worse and worse and every time you think it can't get any worse it does and then they lost her sister-in-law who's 34 years old to breast cancer a year ago and now her husband has cancer um, he also has rheumatoid arthritis um, Sjogren and ankylosing spondylitis so he basically his spine is degenerating and he's in constant pain and um, he has to have this special surgery where there's only like 10 surgeons in the whole country that can do this and um, the doctor in our area um, left and now Johns Hopkins has brought in two surgeons and they're in a situation where because of Medicaid he has this time window of like a week and his blood counts are way off and it's just it's just been really tough but they have tremendous faith she always smiles she's the kindest person um, when I think of the Beatitudes I think she really has all of them and she's so faithful and she just she supported them for their whole marriage they have a, a 13 year old daughter um, who's very delightful as well and um, they just really need to be lifted up because I don't know what's going to happen with Michael it's very serious Let's all agree in prayer. Yeah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift Michael and Julie both up to you this evening, Lord. Lord, we ask for healing on Michael's body. Yeah. He has many ailments, Lord, but we know that you are the great healer and you can take care of all of them, Lord. Lord, we ask for guidance as they seek medical care, Lord. Mm -hmm. We ask that you just open doors for them that uh, that they may enter in, that, that you would have them go through, Lord. Lord, we ask for a comfort for their family. We ask for uh, a peace and an understanding that uh, that surpasses anything of the natural world, Lord, that, that you could give them, Lord. Lord, we just uh, ask for a, a comfort that uh, just gives them uh, yeah. the, 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 the knowledge and the, and the, and the, the will to, to go through this. To, to know that, that you are in control of everything, Lord. Lord, we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We can be seated. And if you don't mind, while you sit there, sit there, just reverently, just, just keep in the presence of the Lord. Let's focus on the Lord tonight. reverently and respectfully before the Lord as we bow and as we prepare our hearts I'd like to encourage you that today this is the first meeting of the camp there will be other meetings down the line for the next seven days six days and we'll be having more meetings and the Lord Please don't feel disappointed for any reason. Mm -hmm. There will be other times of prayer. There will be other times that we will stand in the gap for you as God's people. But it seems to be very important that we pause a moment and look to the communion. Yes. Look to the bread yes. and look to the wine. Look to the broken body Amen. and the flowing of that blood of Christ that flowed from Calvary. That we can remember that sacrifice on the cross. Amen. And while our brother, brother Barney, brother Gorginus, comes up to administer. The Lord's Supper, we would like to mention to you that this is the Lord's table, and it's not a table of global missions. There are basically two conditions. One, as long as you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, and the second condition is as long as you are walking the best you know how according to God's word to please Him.
based on your still condition, we invite you to partake of your communion that's before the Lord's table. And I call on these two brethren, Brother Barney and Brother Joe. Father, we do give you thanks for this time, for this wonderful opportunity to commune with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We remember, O oh Lord, your body broken for us. We remember the blessing of life that it means to us. We now bless this bread and we break it. We might all receive together this blessing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If each person will just take uh, the piece and hold it uh, in your right hands, and when all have been served, we will eat together.
children. Lord, we consider it a privilege, Lord, to partake of this Lord, Lord's body. We thank you, Lord, for that opportunity. We're reminded of our brother Paul when he wrote, Lord, that you live within us and that we suffer a cross also. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the strength that we receive from your heavenly throne. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the strength that we receive from partaking together mm -hmm. of this your body and your blood that is shed for us. Lord, we, not, we are not worthy, but we thank you for your grace that you sent Jesus that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Amen. We bless this cup in his precious name, in the name of our Lord and Savior. And we ask as we take it, partake together that you give us the extra added measure of that life that you have sent forth, Lord, to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Lord. Yeah, indeed, happy to be here. And thank you for the respect and reverence given to our Heavenly Father. And um, I'd like to share some thoughts with you from the Word of God. And I have some handouts here. Not my handout, <clears throat> not my handout, but I was praying and looking to the Lord. And this is nothing but the Word of God. This is His Word. So there are a number of scriptures I wish that I could have downloaded into your spirit. Hundreds and hundreds of, few hundreds of scriptures and about the Holy Spirit, about how God is working. But then I realized that um, more and more I pray, more and more that number became less and less and less. Because I realized that many of you have brought your Bibles here to the camp. So what I did, I just felt very much impressed of the Holy Spirit to share with you. Just, um, and I have not printed out all, so I have limited copies. So I'm gonna distribute this here to um, maybe each family or something, but you could always photocopy. And you could follow on because it's nothing more than the scriptures, nothing more nothing less than just some scripture verses here that I'll be going through. Now, I don't usually do this. This is the first time I'm going to do this. There's always a first time. And sometimes, and the Lord will have us to just go the first time way. Ever so often, first time doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask somebody from this group here, if you can, and they can be there. Somebody from this group here, and I have another set here. And so we're going to go to these scriptures, and they're familiar scriptures, very familiar. And, and those of you who don't have a copy, don't worry. You just have to follow along in your Bibles. I've purposely um, printed them in a larger print because, as you can figure, we cater for more and more of seniority. Not to say that you're not. So those of you who can flip through the pages of your Bible and so on. And, and out of these here, I would like you to just have these scriptures with you while you're at camp. Read them and reread them. They are all interlinked. Because this is God speaking to us. This is God's word. This is... God's commandments. These are the statutes of the Lord. This is the Holy Writ. This is the Book of Books, the Holy Bible. This is the Word. This is the commandments of the Lord. And so this is what we're going to go through. And in addition to that, as the Lord leads, there are the scriptures that I would not, I have not quoted here. But as the Lord leads, we will just ask the Lord to just minister these words to our hearts. Amen? Amen. So let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, you sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from all their destruction and fears. We thank you, Lord, that whatever you have said in your word, you're able to bring it to pass. What you have promised, you're able to fulfill because you're Almighty God. There is none else beside you. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your words are yea and amen to us who believe. Lord, we accept your word. We believe in your word. Lord, may every doubt and unbelief and everything, everything that is negative be just cast away from us. And may the faith of God come alive and touch our spirits and quicken us, Lord, as we read from the Holy Writ, your divine, precious word, that we may be strengthened in the inner man, that we may be able to face tomorrow. Bless us, bless your word, and glorify the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.
Praise God. And while we are going through these scriptures, I want you to focus how important you are as a child of God. Because God has made each one of us as a tripartite being. He made us with body, soul, and spirit. And that innermost being within us, our spirit, is that resemblance from God. Because in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 26, I think he said, God said, come let us make man in our own likeness and our own image. So you were made in the likeness and in the image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And when God says he made you in his likeness and image, it does not mean a physical image. It means a spiritual image that God is a spirit and he has given us that spirit so that we can communicate with God and his Holy Spirit can speak back to us and we can have that wonderful fellowship and enjoy that depth of communion. That's the purpose why God has made us that from our innermost beings, from out of our bellies from deep within that we can worship God Almighty. Amen. That we can bow before Him, we can tell Him, and we can communicate with God. Yes, we are not mad people if we said, yes, I spoke to God this morning and He answered my prayer. Amen. I woke up this morning and I said to the Lord, I uh, thank you Lord for such a blessed day. There is a brother in the prison of North Battleford. He was asked to pray. And he was praying and he said, Lord, give us a wonderful day and bless us and so. And he said, Lord, I hope you're having a good day too. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, wonderful. So you can talk to your best friend. Yeah. You can talk to your lover. You can talk to your key spar, as we say. You can just download and give him everything. You can, he, as he embraces you and he brings you into that relationship with God. That's the spiritual man. That's the context why God has made us that we can talk with him and communicate Amen. with him. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's God's will for you to be here. Make no mistake about it. It is God's purposes and it's God's will being fulfilled that you are at Camp 2017 here in North Carolina. Hallelujah. So here it was at the time of Joel they were going through lots of struggles. They were going through the famines and the destruction of all their crops. As you know that the land of Israel is an agriculturally based land where they do farming and those are simple ordinary people. Hallelujah. Those are the people I find God uses so much. God uses simple ordinary people. Hallelujah. Because he touches our spirits. And he calls us and he ministers to our spirit. He does not minister to our intellect. Our intellect is our own. How we can figure this out and what we can do and how we can project this and all kinds of thoughts. But it, whenever God is leading us, he uses our intellect secondarily, but it comes to our spirit. That's the main stream that God uses. So at the time of Joel, they were going through difficulties. And I'm, I'm, I think that the Spirit of God is impressing me to say that many homes are going through difficulties. Many friends are going through difficulties. They're not speaking with each other. They're not communicating with each other. They're fightings and squabblings inside of families, outside of friends, and all kinds of things that are going on. But the Lord is saying, regardless of all that has happened, and you walked away, and you looked back at the land, you see barrenness, you see all kinds kinds of things that have taken place. The enemy came in and has destroyed the crop. And there are three um, kinds of destructions here. The canker worm, the caterpillar worm, and the palmer worm. One attacks the root, one attacks the bark, and one attacks the tree. So by the time you know it, it's complete disaster. All that has happened. And so this was going on in the book of Joel at that, at that time. But amidst all of that, then came the word of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Amen. This is the evidence that God wants us to realize. The light has come. The dawning of a new day has come. God will work things out for you. You just have to keep believing Him, serve Him, and look to Him. Amen. 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 Can I get a louder amen? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. So in Joel chapter 2, verse 21 to 29, if you can follow that in your Bibles or from your printout. Fear not. This is what the Lord is saying to us. This is not only the word of God for Joel's days. It's for us now. He's saying to you, to your circumstances, to your family, to your household, to your friends, to your community. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Hallelujah. Some of us here, I'm prophesying, saying to you, that it seems like God will do great things when you return back to your job. God will do great things. Believe Him. And believe Him that you will see that God will do great things when you return back to your home. Hallelujah. While you're here, don't let the enemy come and press you with thoughts and try to confuse you and say, oh, give it over to the Lord and leave it there. Verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield her strength. Be glad then, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down from for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Hallelujah! I'm saying to you, God will restore what the enemy has taken. Amen. God will restore. You have to claim God is a restoring God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's restoration for the people of God. Restoration in the house of God. Restoration in the family of God. I don't care what has happened. My Bible tells me restoration belongs to God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's doing a work of restoration. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't worry about that runaway son, that wayward daughter, or, or some nephew or something. Don't worry. Pray them in. Pray them in. And that's what the enemy wants us to focus on, worrying about them. Pray. You can do something. You can pray. And verse 24, And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Hallelujah! Amen. Imagine what overflowing if I pour a glass, if you ask me for a drink of water, I pour you in that glass of water. Isn't that so? That's man's measure. But that's not God's measure. God will keep pouring and pouring and fill that glass. And that glass or cup overflows and overflows and overflows. That's the blessings of the Lord. And that's how God moves. The overflowing um, formula, I call it. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar worm, and the palm worm, for my great army which I sent among you. Hallelujah! God is doing that work. He's restoring. And you have to believe God for that. Restoration of your health. Restoration of whatever you, you, you might call it. You would know the, your circumstances. Verse 26, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Hallelujah. They that put their trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame. Sometimes it seems like we're headed that way, right? You're heading towards the precipice and say, God, help me here. Your name and then immediately just before that falling over stops and at the brink of that precipice the whole situation is turned around that's the god that we serve so tonight god is stirring our faith god is stirring our faith he wants us to believe him and trust him Amen. and accept him attempt i mean in other words reach out for those things. And verse 27, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. 
Hallelujah. I'm in the midst of you. I'm in the midst of this congregation. We are spiritual Israel. We are God's people. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will, I will, I will, will, will. And if God says he will, he will do it. Do you believe that? He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. His Holy Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Prophecy is another subject for another day. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. That's the overflowing I'm talking about. And in those days will I pour out my spirit. God is pouring out his spirit. I tell you, God is doing a wonderful work. He is doing a tremendous work. And um, all over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be, there's a mighty, glorious, powerful revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm excited up, up here. You won't believe it. I'm excited up here. Because when God is working, we ought to be excited. Amen. Amen. We ought to be a people that are energetic. I mean, I know some of us are quiet. I'm a shy person too. I understand that. But when the Spirit of God really begins to move, we've got to be. You've, we've got to move. Amen. Can you not hear the rustling of the mulberry trees? Yes. Can you not feel there's a moving on in your spirit? Amen. So we want to encourage you to move on. Move on for the Lord. Pray some more. Read, read God's word some more. Speak in tongues some more. Oh yes, praise God some more. Let's get on with the Lord. Hallelujah. And you'll see differences begin to happen. And after the Lord prophesied that, and he said he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh in the book of the Old Testament, Joel, then came what? The New Testament. You know, the New Testament. Gen um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, John, and then Acts. And then, this is not only for the prophets now. This is not in Joel's time. This is for our time. God began to fulfill his word in Acts chapter 2 and verse 2. And when, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord, one place. And this is what I want to encourage you. If we are here, we have to have one accord. We have to have unity. And I'm saying to us, as God's people, if there is some differences between us, lay it aside. If at this serve, if at these meetings here, if you found there's a little difference, go to your brother, make it right, and say, brother, I'm sorry, forgive me, and move on. That's the way of the blessing, that God will bless you. And when the day of Pentecost were fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. God will only bless unity. God cannot bless disunity. A tug of war and fighting and pulling and so on, it will not work. And then suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. You imagine that. I wonder how much was that on the Richter scale. <laughs> it must have done some things there. It was more in the spiritual than in the natural. You could imagine what erupted in the, in the hearts and in the spirits of those people. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. What a miracle. What a sight to behold. Hallelujah. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And I love this word, Holy Ghost. I use Holy Ghost more than Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost is old time, old fashioned word, you know. Holy Ghost and power. It's the Holy Ghost and power that is keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and power that is keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just witnessed a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them other ones. That's the deliverance we're looking for. That's the freedom we want. And I tell you, I challenge you tonight, go to your bedside if you're not having that freedom and say, Oh God, set me free. Set my tongue free. Set my spirit free. Set my heart free. We are supposed to be free towards one another. Free towards serving God. That's what God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and said, Tell Pharaoh to let my people go that they may worship me. Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot worship God in bondage and restrictions. You can only worship God in freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then let's go down to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. I made it very easy for you. I gave you all the scripture that <laughs> you got my sermon outline. <laughs> Except for the spaces in between. There you have to make your notes. I thought about that one, by the way. And it says about the Word of God. And notice, we are touching on the Spirit. God made the Spirit in the beginning. He promised to pour out His Spirit, energizing and in, empowering our spirits. And then it happened in the book of Acts, where they were filled with the Holy Spirit. It's spirit, 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 hallelujah. Amen. You know that song, spirit move. Amen. Spirit move. That's the moving of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to move in our hearts and lives. And so, I love this scripture because it speaks about the word of God. And it speaks about the spirit of man. Here it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. The two-edged sword, when one side cuts, the other side yields. God does a tremendous work. Hallelujah. Very, very much deep into our spirits. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Piercing it, dividing the soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. I am told by medical people that there is a very, very thin margin between the marrow and the bone. They are so closely connected. And that's in the natural, in the spiritual, between the spirit and the soul. They operate so close. But the Holy Spirit can ignite our spirit to discern the difference, Amen. to know the difference. Amen. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hearts. God knows our spirits. God knows our hearts. God knows right now what we are thinking. When we come to the service and we sat and we sit in the meeting and we are here in the Uwari forest and our mind is miles and miles away. God knows that. So we need to bring into subjection. Sometimes we have to pray, Lord, captivate my mind. And bring me into your divine presence that I may be in audience with you. We've got to be aggressive sometimes because our thoughts linger about the place. And we can have wrong thoughts and just can invade our beings. We need immediately, as soon as we have the wrong thought about someone, the wrong thought, the wrong judgment, immediately, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this thought. That's not of the right spirit. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And you use God's word. Encourage the young people. The more you use God's word, the more your, the sword will be sharpened. And God will bring that word into your re remembrance at the right time when you needed it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And because the scripture says that greater... Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. That's powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. 17, sorry. And this is a powerful scripture. It shows you here again with your spirit. Do not allow your spirit. You know, 
I should stick a pin here. You know why people go into yoga and they go into deep meditation? Because they allow their spirit just to be um, attracted to the things that are not on the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And because of that, yoga, well, I don't know if anybody here does yoga, but just a, a word of caution. If with yoga, our minds can go off and our spirits could be misled. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something that's better than yoga. It's serving the Lord Jesus Christ, body, soul, and spirit. Amen. They that worship God must worship Him in spirit. And give Him your all, and He's going to do the work in you. Now the, spirit, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I can't hear you. There is liberty. liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the world is crying out for. You look at many young people you know, out there, you, you look at many people, they're in bondage, they're held captive, and they're looking for liberty. But we who know better that this whole liberty can only come from the Holy Spirit, Amen. setting us free, breaking the bars, and letting us go free. You know, the, the, um, the Apostle Paul, Paul and Barnabas, they were in that prison in the book of Luke, in the book of Acts chapter 16, and they were there. They were in a natural prison, but in their spirit, they were free. Amen. There's freedom in their spirit, although being in a natural prison. And what kind of people will want to praise God at 12 midnight? You would say something is wrong. Their doctrine is not, but you know what happened? The spirit of God just came upon them. Rejoice evermore, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. And they were just rejoicing. And then what happened? The prison bars were just swung right open. Hallelujah. Isaiah 59, 19. We're coming down. We're coming down. Hallelujah. We're coming down to crunch time. Don't worry. Uh, we're going to finish. <laughs> Are you tired? No. Can you stand for a quick moment? Just stand for a quick moment. Amen. Just burn up some of those that nine calories by standing in church. <laughs> Stretch your hands up and down and out and in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Well, I just want to remind you, not because we're in church, we're supposed to be restricted. Church does not mean that we cannot um, let loose by the Holy Spirit and just um, do whatever God wants us to do. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated now. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, what's happening? The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So the enemy has no authority over us. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16 or 1816. Can anybody help me here? Jesus said it. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not, will not, cannot prevail against it. Hallelujah. Amen. The church belongs to Jesus. It's his church and he'll do the building, right? And so, you shall not be afraid. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. Thank the, the Spirit of God in us will cause us to overcome. And to, um, as David said, by my God, I have run through a troop. I have leaped over a wall doing exploits for the name of, for the Lord, it's by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. And in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 11 and verse 14, it says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that's the resurrection Spirit we're talking about, 
He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Hallelujah! To all of you, all of us who are sick, the Spirit of God shall lift us up out of that. There is resurrection power. Hallelujah! That we believe in. And then it, the, this verse, I purposely included it because it was used up at North North Balfour was ministered. <clears throat> For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. So we're talking spirits here. Spirit, Spirit, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's how we know that we're growing into that image, that likeness that God wants. That's how we're growing to perfection when we are um, growing with Him. That he will lead us step by step. That's how we grow into sonship by the Holy Spirit of God. In Luke chapter 4. That was Romans, that last part. Romans 8, 11, 14. Oh, I'm sorry. Please correct that. Thank you. I accept that correction there. Romans. I don't know how I type Hebrews. Thank you for helping me. I knew somebody would correct me, and that was good. <laughs> Right, every joint really supplied. Okay. Amen. And let's turn over to Luke, to, to that mention in Luke chapter 4, 18. Now, you, you'd find exact words in Isaiah chapter 61. Because what happened, this incident here, when Jesus went into the temple, it is said that they, they um, into the synagogue, and so they would read the Torah and the Mishnah, and the scriptures, that's the Hebrew scriptures, they would read, and so on. So at that particular time, the scripture says in the book of Luke that Jesus got up to read, and he read exactly um, the book of Isaiah chapter 61. And it says him, the spirit, and he was just repeating, because that was a fulfillment. You see, we not only, God is not only telling us so much about the Holy Spirit, He's showing us the way. He's giving us example to his son, Jesus Christ, when Jesus was upon the face of the earth. And he was reading. And these are the words he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised hallelujah Amen. now the spirit of the lord is the one who anoints us anointing does not come by the flesh anointing does not come by programs or if i can work up something anoint that, that anointing comes directly from the holy spirit Amen. we sing a beautiful song in south america by the anointing Jesus breaks the yoke. By the anointing, just as the Spirit spoke, these are the days of the latter rain. God is moving by His Spirit again. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Hallelujah! And, and every yoke shall be broken by the anointing. That anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. And He anoints our, our spirits so that we can be healed and delivered, healing the brokenhearted, and preach deliverance, and so on. Um, turn over to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. And this has never happened to me. I can't ever recall anybody predicting what I'm going to say. <laughs> this has never, ever happened. Anyway, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can we say that together? It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Do you believe that? So the Lord is saying, it's by His Spirit. Yeah. Don't just give and yield to Him in Spirit. And this is a beautiful example. 
when Jesus was going and he stopped by at the well. And probably he was thirsty. And all that he said to the woman at that well, can I have a drink of water, please? And she immediately, she noticed. And she said, how is it that you being a Jew, asking me for a drink of water? You see, the Jews and the Samaritans, they were not on friendly terms. And so how is it? What Jesus did there, he has broken down the wall of partition. We talk, today we hear in the world out there about discrimination, big long word discrimination and they have all kinds of discrimination but I look to you and I say to us in the kingdom of God there's no discrimination Amen. among the people of God there's no discrimination hallelujah Amen. I just love you people from North Carolina isn't that good I just love you I tried my best to adopt your accent but I just I'm not getting to you I just fall in love with the people here in North Carolina because, you know, I often come here and I do not even remember that I'm of a different ethnicity. I do not remember that. I just see beautiful people. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So this is how, and the Lord saw this woman. He said, please for a drink of water. He said, how is it that you, being a Jew, asking me to drink? And then she went on, she spoke, and you know, there's always a little bit of pride. Our mountains, Jacob worshipped in the mountains, and blah, 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 and so on and so on. And Jesus said, if you had known, if you had known the crooks of the matter, hallelujah. And many people don't know. They're depending on us. And I say to us here at this camp, that's the message as we go out, that God will use us to connect with other people. Amen. And he said, that um, God is a spirit. He's just reminding her of the scriptures. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must, must, that's imperative. There's no way around them. Mm -hmm. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. God knows that so much. And finally, 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 hallelujah. I thought somebody would say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I promised that I would not attempt preaching the everlasting gospel here. <laughs> so anyway, John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that anointing abides with you? Amen. So we have to trust God to live up to that investment. That's the investment. First of all, I see it. And I stand corrected here. The, the first big investment that the Lord did for us is the cross of Calvary. Amen. God gave his only begotten son. Yes. And so that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we accepted that salvation. Yes. I see this, this anointed that God has invested in us. It's not just for only say, oh, I'm feeling the anointing while I'm praying and speaking in tongues, and I get the heebie-jeebies, ah, you know, and I feel good about it, and then I get up and pray, praise the Lord, hallelujah, you know, and we keep moving. It's deeper than that. It's very, very deeper than that. And that anointing is for a specific purpose. God has anointed us just like he had anointed Jesus. Because Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon him because he's anointed him. To do what? To sit down? Oh, well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No. It's to live a life of righteousness. It's to operate as sons of God. It's to pray for someone. It's to deliver our gifts and ministries that God has given unto us. Amen. That's the whole purpose. By the anointing, not by ourselves. And so, but the anointing, verse 27, 1 John chapter 2, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not any man teach you. It does not mean that you'll stay away from church services. Young people, is that okay with you? It does not mean that you'll stay away. You should come to service because we learn by the anointing 
And by that anointing that has touched our elders, our ministries, that God has given them their, their mouthpiece of God. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, there are things that God will teach you. That you will, in other words, it's not coming from the mind of man. It's coming from the Holy Spirit. And whether God use an elder or a deacon, a brother or a sister, or some ministries or whoever, to show you something, that's the, it's coming, coming by the anointing. And it's truth and it's no lie. And even as it had taught you, ye shall abide in him. We will sit under the anointing and we'll be blessed under, under the, the anointing. Amen? Amen. Amen? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is history for me. You have seen my notes. <laughs> I never did that. So, let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, which, dear God, will strengthen us, help us to enjoy this camp as the days go by. Lord, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for taking away the tiredness of the day from travels and all the rest. And quicken us, Lord, and help us to enjoy what you have given us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. We can be seated. Thank you very much. I hope that this first meeting has started on a high note. Some people think, well, we should end on a high note. I believe we should start on a high note, keep up the high note, and end on a high note, and live on a high note, and be on the high note. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Announcements and those who are responsible. Thank you.